um, we get a um, bit of extra attention here. This is good. So, so nice to see so many faces. This is exciting. All right. So the countdown is saying 59 minutes and 24 seconds. Um, I suppose that's because at some point we thought the presentations are going to be at 5.30, but <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now, definitely. <laughs> So I'm going to ask again everyone to mute themselves so that we don't get too many interruptions while presenting. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're feeling good and probably a bit tired, which is also a good sign. That means they've been working a lot and hard. But just give me a quick thumbs action here. How are you feeling? Are you here? Are you here? Where are you? Show me your thumbs. Good, I'm seeing a lot of good thumbs. Um, I, my name is Darian and I am gonna be hosting the project presentation together with Michael. I hope you all are ready. And to start, I am going to share my screen for the last time today and for a long time. You all see my screen? Michael? Please yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we do. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So to get ourselves started now, I would love you to get a bit up of the desk and search something red. And you have 30 seconds. I start the timer Ooh, now. I like the parrot. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if you can, whoo, go for it. Do a screenshot. I hope people who can do screenshots right now do them. I don't know if you can see something. Ah. <laughs> who is screenshotting? Simon, are you on it? <laughs> okay. So, uh, and the next one and oh so wonderful so many red things just bring out your biggest smile as well because this is our group picture for the entire event simon you're done oops let's stop that don't forget one. to take both screens yes did you take both screens wonderful i did all of them the three cool. of them. i have wonderful. three i have only two i have <laughs> okay. only Oh, but on the third yeah. one, people are not um, sharing their yeah. camera pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. You did wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, which is also a good reminder um, to let you know that we're recording the session. So unless you are not comfortable with being recorded, uh, we assume you are. And if you are not, please come back to me either via email or Slack or Zoom. And I'm asking again, everyone to mute themselves. Thank you so much. Um, as usual, I show you quickly the rules. Please meet yourself at all times. And the rules of the presentation are as follows. Each team has three minutes to present their project and one minute to receive question, questions and answer them. And we will be strict about the time timing. So please be mindful about that. Uh, the presentations are being recorded. And if you have Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, don't forget to share screenshots or videos or photos or uh, just a note on social media with the hashtag GlamHack2021 at and at us at OpenDataCH and ETH Bibliothek. And you can obviously also share it with the rest of the social media verse. Um, for the teams, in case you haven't done it, please, uh, about the documentation of your projects, please update your project on the hack site. That means from challenge to project. So it lights up in color as well. And we know this is a project that is active. Uh, make sure all members are accounted for 
either on the hack site or on the Google Sheet or both. In best scenario, as you document on both, make sure all the team members' names are written, spelled correctly, and that everyone who's actually collaborated in the project is accounted for. And also make sure that your title is correct correctly spelled, correctly written, and it is the correct title of your project. And are the links you have linked to correct? No broken links, please. And without further ado, we go into the presentations. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Um, we will present 17 projects today, which are the Peloton Experience, uh, the 1971 and all that women's right to vote in Switzerland, a uh, walk through Zurich around 1910 with team seven collection chatbot Silverfish, team eight ERARA recognizing mathematical formulas and tables, team 11 Helvetics and XR guide to Helvetia, team 12 oh, He Artful, Heartful, uh, team 13 St. Gala Globus, team 14 the spatial involvement of a museum's, co museum's collection, team 15 Wikidata tutorial factory. 17, Making Digitized Scores Audible, Team 18, Wiki Commons Metadata Analysis Tool, Team 22, Culture in Time 2, Team 23, Deploy Looted Art Detector, so anyone can use, Team 24, Nachtschicht 21, Team 26, Echtzeit and Open Glam, and finally, Team 27, that is a one-man show, as far as I am aware, Archived Data Diver. And this is how I'm ending my shared screen and I invite team number one, the Peloton Experience, to come forward. The floor is yours and you have three minutes now. So hello, Annika, you start. Hi there, uh, my name is Annika. I work for ZAPA, the Swiss Archive for Performance Art. Here's my colleague, Catherine, and we are very happy to uh, present you the results of two days of work. You can see here our team, and I already want to say thanks a lot for your great work. Um, together with uh, Simona, Jelke, and Roberta, we were able to develop a small prototype, and I hand over to Birk to present you the small application uh, which was developed within these two days, and he will be able to tell you some of the technical details. Yeah, hello. Just as a reminder, so this was about oral history. So we have a long video and we wanted to enrich it with data. And we started with the transcript. So this very basically ugly, dirty transcript technically seen. I mean, the content is very fascinating, but not the one, not the kind of data you want to start with. But um, we managed to get this data in a very structured way. So to make made an entity extraction, to connect it with other databases, with Wikidata, with our own, to collect images and things like that, to transform it into a much nicer JSON. So this is what we have right now. And it's not yet styled, I would say. It's more, we are more a feature team than a style team, I would say. So we have this video, which is three and a half hours long. And you have here keywords, which we found via entity extraction. And then you can, if you are interested, for example, in Isodora Duncan, you can simply select that and go there. Um, so that it jumps automatically to the position where Ursula Peloton is talking about Isadora Duncan. And you get other information. So for example, if there is a, oops, you should have more information on the right. Yeah, like this is a good example. So this is a segment um, where several things are mentioned. And then you have images too, for example, from our database. You have links directly to Wikidata um, to see more about Lausanne, for example, here. Or if you want to know more about Alain Bernard, in our database, you get a direct connection there and can see what archival holdings we have there. And it automatically also changes if you just navigate the video then you can see that on the right side, you get an update of that too. So this is basically about it. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, this is really cool, Birk. Um, what, what steps are needed to make it public for it to go live? Not so much. I mean, we a little bit have to clean up. There are some things which are not working. Um, I didn't demonstrate, so we still have a search function if you look for some keywords. 
Um, so we would have to a little bit polish it, I would say, and test it. But that's something that could be done over the coming month? Yeah, yeah, I think. Cool. Congratulations. Yeah, it's great. Um, I have a question as well. What were you um, the biggest challenges you had to overcome in this project? I think the source data is probably something. So if you don't really have structured data and I mean, you see, if you look here at the keywords, then we have Brustbein, for example, yeah. very relevant keyword. So this kind of the, the editing of the pro, so the, that is probably a, a big challenge, but I mean, the others can add to what were the biggest challenges for them. What, what is the software you used it uh, behind to put it together? I mean, we used a lot of Python basically to parse the data. So. Unfortunately, uh, your time is up now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Burke. And Annika, Jalke, Simona, Roberta, and Katrin as well. Next to present their project is team number three, the 1971 and all that women's right to vote in Switzerland with Annabelle Wiegert and Lothar Schmidt. The floor is yours. So I hope you can see my, my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, you, and you can also hear me. So I haven't forgotten to, yes. to switch on my microphone. All is well. <laughs> okay. So uh, in our project, Annabelle and me have chosen the subject of women's suffrage in Switzerland. This right to vote was introduced 50 years ago in 1971. But the discussion about it started 100 years earlier. And this discussion is documented mainly in daily newspapers. Many of the newspapers have been studied by a large Swiss project called Impresso Media Monitoring of the Past. Through this uh, project, several million articles have been captured. And within the framework of the project, an application called Impresso App has been developed. It, you see it here on my screen. Uh, it allows users to analyze the content of articles according to a variety of criteria. There are even predefined topic clusters. You see them here on the left side. But these relate to the entire corpus. Furthermore, the full texts of the articles are protected by copyright and are therefore not freely available. For more differentiated and dynamic and open queries, one has to rely on one's own skills. And this is what Annabelle dealt with yesterday and today. And now she's uh, talking to you. Okay, um, so I have been working on a Jupyter notebook where I loaded a data set from Impresso, uh, with, where words like Frauenstimmrecht um, appeared. And um, I tried to, um, to, to do two things. One thing was to, to make it a, a word cloud based on the publication year of the text. So I have a little function and if I type in a year, then I get the word cloud with words from articles relating to women's suffrage from that year. So if I type in 1900, for example, I see uh, the words are in different order every time. But here uh, I see the word colony and I was a bit surprised about that. And there is Aust Australia, but I realized that around 1900, some um, former colonies in Australia um, introduced the women's suffrage. Yes. 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 Oh, can you mute yourself? Maybe? Okay. Um, and then I tried also to uh, make uh, a topic model, yeah, identifying topics in general in these um, articles. And I, I visualized this with a with this uh, uh, Pi LDA uh, Python library. And um, this is still to be refined. I, uh, I realized that um, you can play with these parameters and you, you have to figure it out a little bit. We still have some words that are not really relevant like da. Um, but I found it interesting, for example, this topic, number four, we can see Polizei, Kommunist, Angeklagte. Annabelle, I need to stop you there. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have one minute for questions now. I'm very sorry. No problem. <laughs> I tend to talk too much. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Okay, 
If you have a question, you can will, raise your hand yeah. in the reactions. Will you keep working on this project after the hackathon? Uh, I hope so. For me personally, it was a great opportunity to start um, to dive into uh, natural language processing with Python. And I hope to pursue this maybe in ZB Lab in the future. Great. Yeah. yeah or, we, are, we are from a library and we have a lot of text, so it's interesting to, to work with, uh, with texts. That's really cool. Or you can you, uh, continue working on it at next year's hackathon or at the working group, for instance. Any, uh, oh, we're out of time anyways. Thank you so much, Annabelle and Lothar, for your presentation. And the next team to present their project is team number five with a walk through Zurich around 1910. That is Saro Pepe Fischer, Kenny Floria, Jan Sandberg, Elias Krembühl, and Michel Piguet. The floor is yours. Well, yes. Hello, everyone. Our project was to merge, it was called a walk through Zurich around 1910. It was to merge historical uh, photographs, historical maps and a 3D model of Zurich. Step one, we displayed um, all the pictures on a map and, um, and we can go from historical map to a uh, to the new map, wrong direction. Well, you can see that later. Here we go. You can look at all the pictures taken by this photographer in 1913. And uh, step two was a video with a 3D animation, which our example was a walk through the Langstrasse um, in 1906, which I am going to show you now. Um, thanks to my amazing team, it was really cool and enjoy the video. And it's video. Was it? So there was some hidden advertisement. You have now a minute for questions. <laughs> it's really, it's really fun. Um, I would be interested in knowing, like, where you would, like, what was your goal, like, yesterday morning, and like, how, like, what were the biggest challenges, and where did you want to go, and what did you eventually achieve, and what is still left to do? Actually, I think the biggest challenge was uh, now figuring out how to render the video this afternoon. We had some problems with the video um, rendering and exporting. So that took quite some time. It's 
in a shabby quality now at the end, but we're going to export a better version. And uh, we, we wanted to show if it would be possible to put historical pictures in the modern 3D model of Zurich. That was the idea in the, in the beginning. Yeah. I think that was absolutely awesome, Saro and team. Um, you have shared the link in the chat, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I also, I've shared already in the chat, but if, if anyone in the Zoom right now wants to share a link, wants to share some sort of information, the Zoom chat will uh, destroy itself after we finish this meeting. I have shared our Google form, uh, our Google sheet where you can share all the links and have a look at it also later. Uh, thank you so much, Saro, Kenny, Jen, Elias, and Michelle. That was a really cool project, and I'm really excited to see how you're going to continue working on it. Uh, next in line is team number seven with collection chatbot Silverfish with Dominic Studer, Jor Lom, Lia Pitera, Micha Reiser, and Randall McGuckin. Are you guys ready? Yes. The floor is yours. That's nice. Um, we we made a, a collection chatbot, like for people to interact with collection objects. And it should be like friendly. That's why we choose the silverfish to be like the the guide. Um, people who work in archives, they know silverfish are generally the enemy of a collection. But we we yeah we choose it anyways. Um, and it's like. Um, you follow a narration, you can choose between options. And yeah, you can see it like it, it shows you objects. You can try the QR code. Um, it's on Telegram. So anybody who has Telegram can try it out. Um, that's like pictures. It's, it's more, it's nicer on, on the phone, but it also works on computer. Um, we took a small selection of objects from the SKKG. It's mainly about like famous people like um, CC Empress of Austria and it can show images and links and it also has like it shows you errors in case there is a dead end. We try not to do any dead ends that was like some of the challenges and I now show you a video of the chatbot. And it's just you can the user can choose it's in German because the collection is in German anyway. So um, and it's yeah, we try to make it a bit funny that also like people who don't come from collections might catch interest in it. And right now it's only like two two narration strings. It would be possible to like to put more strings and links and all. But yeah, it's a lot of work as it's like not intelligent. It's all like we, we decide it, we curate it. And yeah, that's why you, you need to do every connection by yourself. Um, I heard food. And yeah, that's like, it would be nice to, that it would be possible for the user to enter um, text that would be like search the collection or something that is connected to the um, to the collection database, and maybe a different backend is needed. But yeah, it was the way to go in this last day, and we are really happy about the result, and we enjoyed working on it a lot. So yeah, that's it. Awesome. Are Thank there any so plans? Much. Are there any plans to use it directly in the museum with its visitors? Have you been able to discuss that already? Um, yeah, I think generally there is some interest into doing that, but it's not yet like decided. And it's um, the SKKG, we don't have like an exhibition, we just have the collection. So it would be nice to make the collection more accessible for the public via like a chatbot like this to show people something about the hidden treasures. And to have an estimate how long it would take to finish it, so to, to really 
I don't know. Neat. I was not the person <laughs> doing all the programming coding work. Um, yeah, maybe to, to add some storylines would be like achievable in a in some time to make it like like a game for the people. But yeah, if you have like the recognition of text and all, then we need some extra work, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We have run out of time anyways, but thank you so much, Lea and Dominic and Jo and Misha and Randall for this really cool project. I hope you can continue your work on it because it would be cool to have more objects and options. Um, thank you so much. Next. Yeah, this was one of our new data sets this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm really glad to have uh, further data sets also from museums. Yes, museums, if you are here listening in, share your data with us for next year. Uh, the next project to present, uh, the next team to present their project is ERARA, recognizing mathematical formulas and tables with Tatiana, Oliver, Melanie, Roman, and Sydney. Are you guys ready? Yes, hello, everyone. Hello, the floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah, oh, sorry, we do. Thank you. We, we came to the Glam Hack for the first time and we came with the challenge to develop a tool to, de to detect and recognize mathematical um, formulas and equations in digitized uh, books from ERARA. And we didn't have a clear uh, idea or approach. And also we are not coders, so we were very happy that uh, Tatiana joined our project and she developed uh, an algorithm to detect and recognize uh, these formulas and, and equations and to put them out in uh, LaTeX. Uh, now I, I would just like to hand over to Tatiana to present uh, the technical aspects. Um, yes, yeah, sure. So actually for this task, I decided to make a seconds to seconds model, which would actually, okay, here is how it'll work. So the, info, the input will be the text, actually images of the text, and then there will be like two algorithms. Firstly, there will be the algorithm, uh, like the first task will be to segment all this text text and then for all the pieces of the images the first algorithm will, would, will just indicate if the image is uh, a mass formula or not and if it isn't a mass formula then it will be translated to the text by the symbol OCR with the Teresect framework and if it is the equation here comes actually my seconds to seconds algorithm so how it will work it will actually take the picture of the formula and then take it to the LaTeX format and yes, here is how it will work. And then um, actually now I'll talk, talk something about the work of my code because nowadays, uh, like right now, it is impossible just to show the output because the model has samples of like 1000 pictures. So right now it's training uh, already for like some hours. So uh, until it isn't trained, the output is impossible. So right now I'll just try to like walk you through my code. So, uh, okay, one second. Are we waiting for Tatiana to share? Ah, yeah. You're, you're muted, Tatiana. Yeah, sorry, I just had some problems with connection. I'm really sorry. Okay, so right now I'll just uh, um, explain you my work. So firstly, I just prepared the data set of 1,000 pictures. And here you can see uh, the table when here is the formula in the latex format and here is the corresponding image. Then I have also like made the data preprocessing. Uh, for example, how to make the matrices of all the images and all the text. Yes, and right there I was on the step of actually the uh, uh, text and images per processing, and right now the model is training. And here is the, how the model will look. Yes, yeah, so it will just take the photos, then it will just image this map. Um, 
actually embodies photo, make a vector of it, and just uh, like properties it and output the result. Yes, and here is actually the main output from my code. So the encoder is the images, and here is how the encoder, like the code, how the encoder will work. And here is the role of the decoder. Titania, um, I'm so sorry, but I need to stop you there. Yes, okay. You, unless you don't want to use up your minute for questions. Um, but I assume people will have questions. So one minute for questions, go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks, it's actually amazing what you did like within one day. Um, I'm deeply impressed because I know how much time it takes to do something like this. I was wondering, do you use some kind of gold standard for that as well? Or are you training a pre-existing model? Um, I, I was looking for the existing model, but there aren't such existence models. So I was trying to make for myself. And I think that right now I would need like nearly a month to make this algorithm and also to put it all together because I need actually to train to learn how to make the right segmentation of the test and also the algorithm which will indicate if it is a photo or not. So I think that nearly like months or two and it will be ready. Great, thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. And thanks for joining us from Ukraine. And I hope the institution will keep in touch with you. Yes. Quite positive, actually. Definitely we will, yeah. That was super impressive. Thank you so much. Team number eight with Tatiana, Oliver, Melanie, Roman, and Sydney. You did a really amazing job within this really short amount of time. Um, next is team 11. Helvet X and XR Guide to Helvetia with Thomas Weibel and Roberta Padlina. Are you guys ready? Yes, we are. Yes, the floor is yours. And here we go. Okay. If you're a Roman soldier, legionary, uh, and set out for Switzerland, you might uh, easily run into problems not finding your way. You might be well equipped with a roadmap of the Roman Empire, such as this one, which has been preserved in Geneva. This is a small section of it. Um, here you might recognize Lake Constance. This is Curia, Cur, where my university sits. You might know Arbor Felix, which is today's Arbon, Atfines, Pin, Vindonissa, Augusta, Raurica, and so on. But this is a map uh, with a uh, couple of problems. So what the, the Romans did not have is any sort of information technology and uh, virtual reality, which, by the way, might have been one of the reasons for the decay of the Roman Empire. So I took digital uh, 3D information about Switzerland, databases providing place names and a map a map of Switzerland without any modern infrastructure, without present day buildings, a map showing Switzerland or the province of Helvetia as it might have been 2000 years ago. This is what we got. You can test it by yourselves. Um, get your smartphone, point it to the QR code, or enter the URL helvetics.thomasweibel.ch directly. And what you'll get is this. The app will take you right where you are at the moment. Um, you, at the bottom, you have a compass in Roman numerals, of course, because uh, we are all Romans. Uh, you can drag the landscape or just turn around with your smartphone to, de to discover um, or to detect any Roman settlement nearby. I am living near Freiburg, as you can see. so. By hitting the single arrow button, I managed to move forward to Friburgum, the Latin name. In order to, to translate, I put the present day Helvetian name as well as the, the airline distance to the settlement. If you need instructions on how to use the app, hit the I button. So you'll get the instructions in Latin, of course. You can, if you don't understand anything, you can write an email. Hitting the double arrow button will take you up by 10,000 double steps, which was the common measure in ancient Rome, to get a glimpse, to catch a glimpse of that marvelous province of Helvetia. 
hitting the double arrow button again will take you down. And on top, you have a, an input field. You can enter any place name in Switzerland, Kur, for instance. And since Kur was a Roman town in ancient times, it will take you Dear right Thomas. to Curia, which was the ancient name for Kur. And hitting the central button at the bottom will take you back to AR mode. Uh, <laughs> that is, which is uh, take you back where you are at the moment. So thank you, Thomas. Now you have a minute for questions. It's once more a very exciting project. I'm sure people want to explore it. Uh, is the link already available uh, on the? on the documentation page? The link is available. I um, showed you the QR code. The URL would be helvetics.thomasweibel.ch. The, um, the app is up and running. It is in Latin, of course. And by the way, thanks to my um, co-worker, Roberta Padlina, who provided the Latin translations. My Latin is not so fluent as it used to. So you would recommend that we go to Duolingo first and do a crash course. <laughs> <laughs> or you can write an email, but emails in Latin, please. OK. Is it, is it easy to add some new information? Yes, it absolutely easily. And uh, that's a crucial point, because it's not scientific at all. So it, what is needed now is historical research, is historical accuracy, the, um, the modification of the information in the app is super easy. Thank you so much, Thomas and Roberta, for this project. And um, I am calling team number 12 for their project presentation, Heartful or He Artful, with Anna, Florina Kaling, Jan Lessig, Thomas Stettler, and Angelika Chachtli. Are you guys ready? Yes, hello, we are ready. Hello, the floor is yours. Do you see um, the presentation in presentation mode? Nope. No? Then you I need to share your screen? To... Oh yeah, sorry, forgot to share the screen. Just a moment. There we go. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. And do you see it also in presentation mode? Yes. Okay. So our uh, project is Heartful, actually. It's about art and emotions. So uh, we paste the link in the chat so you can really try it out so that you don't think we have only made some nice greens. We actually did some programming. Not everything works yet, but um, it, it's working quite well. So what is it all about? Well, everybody experiences emotions. And this is the starting point to actually discover art. And the, the, the goal of it all is to invite a large, larger audience to actually experience art than we have today. So it's heartful. It's about emotions. And the first question, it's in German because we actually want to use it in a museum afterwards here in Switzerland. So it's, uh, it's the reason why it's in German. So the first question and the only question you get is, welche Emotionen wecken die folgenden Kunstwerke in dir? What kind of emotions? do the artworks um, evoke in you. And then you're presented actually with artworks. And the only thing you need to do is choose the right, your emotion, the, the emotion that you get when you look at this um, picture. You have only one emotion at uh, your disposal. And if you're not happy about these six basic emotions that are um, scientifically um, you know, uh, chosen the ones that are the basic emotions of a human being, then you can add another emotion. You have the possibility to enlarge the picture. As usual, you have the possibility to get some detailed information about the picture, because after all, we're talking about art. And um, when you have chosen, you're actually presented with the results for that uh, particular um, artwork. So, what, how did the others feel about this artwork? And you see that the green one is yours. So you are probably um, in the average with your choice for this particular um, painting. 
Uh, if you've done that, you can go to as many other images as you like, because there is quite a big database of, uh, of paintings already available, and do the same thing. Once you're finished, we try and collect some um, basic uh, information about the people so that in the end, we can also do some statistics about it. And that's, um, uh, that's how we would like to use it. That's more or less the, the app, and we would like to use it in museums in connection with guided tours or also for people to use it at home for, for themselves. And uh, this is the project team, and I would like to thank um, the Swiss Institute for Art Research because we could use their data to actually uh, do this. And um, we are happy that you can try it out. One remark, it's not a secure website yet, so you need to allow um, the usage of it on, in your browser. And uh, please use it so we have some first statistics available. That's it. Thank you so much, Jan. You have a minute now for questions from the floor. And the floor can ask their questions. Yes, I have a question. Um, yes, where did you get the images from? Sorry? Uh, the, uh, the images, are they dy dynamically loaded or are they static? They're dynamically loaded. So you can, uh, when you do an uh, exhibition, you can load a preset for the exhibition? Or? Yeah. OK. Where did you get the initial statistics from, like about the feelings? <laughs> like you have more than 1,000. That's an invention. That's OK, actually, uh, you just uh, made it just, up. Uh, okay. Pretending. So your time is actually up. Thank you so much for your project presentation and your hard work. Next project to present their, uh, next team to present their project is team number 13 with Joshua Binswanger, Stefan Egli, Mark Melnikowicz, Lothar Schmidt and Adrian Funk, the St. Gala Globus. Are you guys ready? Yeah, that's uh, me. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, here we go. Okay. Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, hello. And yeah, well, there are five people that worked on it on the San Carlo Globus. Um, we wanted to create um, concepts for an interactive showcase for a web application. Um, we a lot of content. Um, visualizations with the 3D model. Um, I can show you um, just a really um, basic <laughs> um, result of our um, of our effort. And basically, um, what we had in mind is that we will have a web application where you can uh, explore the Sun Color Globus, where you can um, explore all the points of interest, and um, also um, how we can was big part of our work, especially in the first day. Um, and then we just did some examples and we wrote some text uh, where we took the content and actually formulated um, some, some prose text. And that is um, part of our work, or especially Stefan and Adrian did it. And we also figured um, or did some tryouts with the 3D object where we tried to do some camera movements and also how we could map animations onto the globe. Um, this is a really simple animation. I hope it's not too chunky through Zoom, but uh, basically um, the globe is ready for a, an app, a 3D app, and it's performing well enough, even um, high res. And we um, figured out how we can map an animation on top on, of the globe so that we could do some interactive elements or when you click on something, an animation will play. And of course, this is just a really basic idea and we could expand on it and maybe add some 3D stuff um, or um, more complex animations, tone and of course, 
these images. Um, yeah, so I'm figuring it out, um, but not to um, the even bigger part was to figure out, okay, what do you want to show? What is the content that is interesting? Um, we did a lot of like um, mapping. We had one particular book that we analyzed and uh, and try to figure out, okay, what is interesting, what is not so interesting. And also to figure out what are the next steps to um, have a really concise concept, um, a really concise um, Vermittlungskonzept. I don't know the English word for that. Um, and so, yeah, resulted the results were some um, text and image mockups, basically, and that I've already shown you here are shown two of them. Um, yeah, and just the, uh, the animation again, and we are looking forward to um, continue that project and actually create a prototype in the near future, hopefully, and um, for that we will work together with the Central Bibliothek, who provided the initial data set, and the digital library space, that's where I work, um, so we hope to continue um, on working on that. and. The first thing we will have to do is to curate the content with the specialists, like the content specialist of the Sun Color Globus. The next thing will then Thank you so much, Joshua. I'm so sorry need to interrupt you here. Um, you can take questions now. Yes, I have a question. Um, yes. Joshua, did you use IIIF for this project? No, but that will, of course, be um, a central part, especially when we work together with the Central Bibliothek. Um, we didn't do any um, cross-linking or anything. We just did it mock-up style in Blender. Okay. Thank you. There were some really intriguing images on there. It's kind of fun. Man Barry, did you have, <laughs> Barry, did you have a question? Sorry. Oh, I just muted Barry. Barry, did you have a question? No, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if there is no more questions, I want to thank team number 13 for their amazing project and work. Joshua, Stefan, Mark, Lota, and Adrian. And we come to team number 14 with Taber Buri, Lennart van de Velde, Jonas Lentenmann, Franz Flückiger, Beatrice Gauvin, and Jasna Zwimfer. And the project is called The Spatial Evolvement of a Museum's Collection. And I see you guys are already getting ready. Tabea? Yes, hello. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, very nice. Wonderful. The floor is yours. Thank you. So we started our work with a new data set which is on the European collection of the Museum der Kultur in Basel and which comprises information of, of like uh, 75,000 rows on this ethnographic uh, collection of objects from all over Europe. I started with the postcards yesterday and something very nice came out of this. We were a wonderful team balanced not only in gender but also in competences <laughs> and um, we had a great time and we have a very nice uh, result. Uh, you see, we call it mapping a collection. So we changed the title. You see here a screenshot um, and Franz will elaborate on um, the result on our tool. So I will already stop sharing my screen and Franz, will you take over? Yes, sure. Uh, so let me share the screen quickly. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, I have the pleasure of presenting the more technical aspects of our work. Uh, we had, first of all, to clean up all the data, which uh, was a pretty intensive task because we had to um, go on with different pipelines uh, with Python, but also with OpenRefine for which we received great aid from uh, outside, which we are really grateful to. So this is our result. Now it's uh, difficult to show a big bunch of data, of course, but uh, this is the result. We managed to destructure the data and make it way more accessible than before. We moreover 
created a web front end, which is actually open in the internet. So you can go and check it out. And uh, here we uh, managed to make this visualization where you can with a range slider see the ratio of uh, which countries contribute to the, more, the most on the catalog of the Museum der Kulturen of Basel. And you can see also it's really easy to make some easy analysis uh, of uh, different periods of time. So uh, this allows some in-depth analysis of the provenience of the objects of this fantastic museum. Moreover, we made a little uh, funnier uh, thing on the other page, uh, which is write me a love letter, where we posted some content uh, about um, um, objects that are exposed in the museum in Basel. And they are all referenced by link and, um, and contain stuff about writing a love letter. And um, yes, this is basically it from the technical point of view. Thank you so much, Franz and Tabea for presenting. You have now a question, uh, one minute to receive questions from the floor. Mm, hey, I have a tiny question. I really like your visualization and I am wondering um, what did you use for the sliding bar? to be able to show the data for over the time? This is a, um, a tool called Material UI, is a mm -hmm. React JS library. So okay. uh, there you can really easily uh, implement this with mm -hmm. a few lines of code actually, yeah. So it's pretty nice. Okay, cool, thanks. You're welcome. Are you planning to uh, extend this, uh, this work, Tobia? at the museum, you think? Well, it's certainly the right direction to go. We didn't discuss the future in our team yet, but um, I will do my best to promote this way to go in the museum. Great, because I think it looks very promising to me. Um, and it, it ties in very well with like um, um, up-to-date provenance discussions. And uh, I think it's great, great way to visualize things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I actually you. wonder, Tabea, because you said at the beginning that it's part of your PhD, if you can utilize that towards your research. Yeah, I will certainly. Um, I mean, there, there could be even more uh, work going in depth of the geographical references, but I will certainly be able to, to use it. Fantastic. That's a win-win-win. <laughs> It is. <laughs> it is now time for me to give the word to my wonderful, charismatic, and extremely talented co-host, oh, yeah, yeah, Michael right. Gasser. It's okay. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to present the next half of the team? Thank you, Darian. Yes, um, I'm actually pretty amazed already. So, um, but I'm also looking forward to the second half of the presentations. And uh, the next team we have on the list is uh, the Wikidata Tutorial Factory with uh, Sarah Fuchs, Alicia Fagerwing, Nicola Wenger. Valerie Hashimoto, Oliver Wadl, Loic Freiburg House, and Amina Engel. Please just go ahead. We can see slides, but we can't hear anything. Uh, hi. Just a yeah. Hi, yeah. Valerie. Uh, hi. Can you see my? Um, Perfect. Yeah, I'm we can hear. We can hear you. Challenge else. page. Yes, yes. Okay. So, yes, I'll start by looking for our challenge. Yes, our challenge was called the Wikidata Tutorial Factory. And our goal was to produce Wikidata tutorial in several languages and to put them on a website uh, for people to download them and go through them. We also had the idea of having an introduction video to Wikidata for CLAM institutions but this was not pursued. So what you can see on our challenge page is one of the first thing we did, we thought of the topics that we could um, talk about in the tutorials. And we tried to make a tree which represents the user journey uh, on our website. So we have the very simple things and then basic edits and a part about queries. Um, what we did is then we wrote some scripts for the tutorials and 
now we have so far a bilingual uh, bilingual website in English and German. So the tree that I showed you before is not fully here, but you could see um, what we got so far um, on the German version. We also have a couple of um, tutorials. The number ones, we don't have that many tutorials in the end. We managed to produce eight tutorials in French, German, Italian, and English. Um, and to show you how the website works, I'll just um, click on one. So this is how to add the website of an institution. So people can just download the documents. It's a PowerPoint presentation. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Yes. Okay. So the idea of the tutorials is that you have slides. Did you hear the voice? No. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Oh, it's because I have the microphone. Um, so we, maybe if unplug, can you hear something now? Yes. Yes. Die gewünschte Institution eingeben und auswählen. Wir haben in unserem Beispiel die Schweizer Handball Hall of Fame gewählt. And then you can click yourself um, through these slides. Sie bis ans um, but maybe I'll go back to this website and plug my... So, as you could hear, we used um, the text to voice um method to create the audio files of our tutorials i'm really sorry valerie i have it's to interrupt you over. here your time okay. is up already but it was really no fascinating <laughs> um and i'm sure there are um any questions around from the audience so is this website already up and running and people can go there and test it out for yes themselves? uh we've got i think well the um, the pity is that we have some tutorials in French and Italian, but as the website is currently only bilingual, um, yeah, you can't get to these tutorials. So at the Yet. moment, yes, uh, we still have to work on these other languages, but otherwise, yeah, as I did before, you can download the tutorial and then go through it. And the idea is we left, um, so in the tutorial presentations, the idea is that you do it in the DIA mode, so you go through it, but we also left the script as a comment below. And our idea is that if you go through a tutorial and then you have the skills, but you speak another language, then you can copy the script and translate it and produce an, the same tutorial, but in another language. And then you can also upload these new tutorials. Um, and then for each uh, tutorial, we also have um, a reply where people can write a feedback or maybe they have corrections, uh, suggestions to improve the tutorial. That's so, great. Okay, yeah. cool. so a lot, uh, there's a lot of interaction ahead, I think, um, in this project. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the development of that and in which direction it will um, develop. Thank you, Valerie, and uh, the entire team for this uh, work. And now um, it's definitely time to turn up the volume of your speakers because we are coming to the next project called Making Digitized Scores Audible, presented by Neni Milo, uh, Nobu Kamiyake, and uh, Lionel Walter. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, can you, can I share my screen or am I already doing it? I am already doing it, right? Uh, we can't see we it. We can't yet. see it, yeah. Not yet. Well, Here we go, yes. Okay, so our goal was making digitized scores audible um, in a long-term perspective, also to have a little button maybe in LAM platforms where there are digitized scores online. And, um, sorry. Ah, okay, so we really tried a lot, as you can see. So the results were not always like really good. So we had to kind of find a way what minimum quality we need uh, in order to get um, sort of a good result um, with the OMR. Oh, sorry, I should have said that we are using OMR 
in that case, Oliveris, uh, as a um, local um, installation and uh, in combination with MuseScore, uh, which is a notational software. So, um, so the question was what, what minimum quality we need. So first of all, we cannot take manuscripts or handwritten scores. Uh, we need really prints. Also, we cannot uh, take like um, um, many pages. We have to have, take like individual pages or single pages. And for the best results, um, uh, you need PNG or JPEG. So usually you can download a PDF um, on those platforms uh, of a score or digitized um, material. So um, best really is PNG or JPEG. Um, so in that case, we used um, uh, triple IF, um, um, the possibilities of triple IF. Um, so, and then also it should be really well readable and there should be enough space between the systems. And um, we haven't tried so many uh, different arrangements. So we um, only took like solo pieces and piano with the vocal. Big arrangements, more testing would be needed. And our final approach basically was then um, creating a JPEG or PNG snippet from a digitized score. Uh, we have to prepare the image, should be um, grayscaled, um, straight aligned in 300 to 400 dpi, convert that in, uh, to a PDF, import that to Audible, where the OMR comes into play, and export a music XML file, import that again to MuseScore, um, then we can edit it. Right, because uh, the result is not uh, perfect always, so you can see that, and then um, export it again and uh, convert it to MEI. So, in doing that, uh, you can do that on Briori. They can also play that. So, here's uh, one example of how an original looked like, and this is uh, the unedited result. Uh, so, you can see here it's actually really good. Um, so, um, only a couple of mistakes and oops, sorry I cannot go back oh yeah I can um, so and here's another original um, now grayscaled and here's the edited result um, 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 yes and now we can play so and I will hand over the screen to actually I'm, I'm sorry I really have to interrupt you here because the three minutes are up already um, okay. unless you want to use your one minute Q&A time to play the music I don't know but um, maybe there are questions uh, from the audience I think we all want to see it absolutely yeah that's what I thought yeah if you could play us um, like just one tune <laughs> Nini? Yeah, I think so. We want to see it in action. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. What is this? Where is my... <laughs> um, you see my whole screen, probably. Yes, yes, uh, yes we do. I didn't, uh, I couldn't. Uh, Don't worry about that. So, so uh, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the imported um, uh, score into, into Verovio. And uh, I can now play it. This is the edited score. So it's, um, it's quite a, a good quality. Great, thank you very much. Bringing data to life. That's um, um, it's a great aspect. Thanks a lot for this uh, project and for this presentation. Uh, very fascinating work. And um, next, um, the next project we have is number 18 and it's called Wiki Commons Metadata Analysis Tool. And uh, it's going to be presented by uh, Nicole Graf, Madeleine Völlmin, Nadine Grubermann and Brian um, Murley, who joined us from Illinois. Yeah. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay. Then let's go to another project, a more dry one, a metadata project. 
Our vision was to have a GLAM analysis tool that compares the metadata of the GLAM sources with metadata from other sources in Wikimedia Commons, because the image archive of the ATH library is one of the largest Swiss GLAM image provided to Wikimedia Commons. We have uh, about 60,000 images on Wikimedia Commons, but we also have a very busy um, crowd. This means that our metadata um, is very volatile and we uh, only correct the metadata in our source system so that we would have love to have um, an analysis tool. What we've been doing the two days uh, now, we um, were uh, we were engineering the requirements and today we were having uh, preparing our cookbook in which we were um, thinking about how to proceed, what would be a, a, the, the um, ideal workflow to proceed with our metadata exchanging. And um, our solutions would be a deluxe solution within Pattypan. Pattypan is, is the tool for upload, uploading initial the, the images. And if this wouldn't be possible, then we would go to the economic, economic solution without petty pen, but perhaps with um, open refine. We would still need um, the Wikimedia Commons community because we would love to have them in the boat for the rules of, for uploading and they should they need to accept our project. The deluxe solution is Java skills and economy is open refine. We, and we have other ideas as well. It's the one um, with this check it uh, blue um, label. And this would be um, that we would love to have our images labeled as a quality image in Wikimedia Commons. Yeah. The team was um, international and very fascinating and very interesting. And thank you very much. Thanks for the presentation. Are there any reactions, questions from the audience? If we have any Wikimedia Commons experts in the audience, that would be the time to yes. not stand up, but speak up at least, or <laughs> make yourself heard. I just have a quick question, if I may. Um, did you look at existing solutions? Because I guess all collections have the same problem with diverging metadata. And, um, yeah, we we were talking with Wikipedians beforehand, and they didn't they didn't know about any solutions yet. Yeah. Well, we, so well, we'll hang on. We will come back. Yeah. Yeah, super groundwork in that case. <laughs> That's super. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, I think this would be a tool very useful for many GLAM institutions because um, many institutions do uploads to uh, Wikimedia Commons. So um, many, many people would be glad to have something like this. Okay, thanks a lot for this work and for this uh, presentation. Um, and now we go to the next project and it's called Culture in Time 2. Um, presented by Manuel Kocher, Gregory Somier Finch, Tammy Lee, Caitlin Troughton, Jean Robert Bisaillon, Antoine Bobien, and Beard Estermann. The floor is yours. Thank you. You should see my screen now. Yes, we Perfect. do. Perfect. So, well, welcome to our presentation. Just as a quick reminder, um, Culture and Time is a cultural calendar which was developed at last year's hackathon. And the goal was now to improve it further to version two, I'd say. Uh, the goals were to open the access to add databases with Sparkle queries, set up spotlights to focus and visualize on data, and of course, to verify the hypothesis that the production data from different data models can be merged. And I can say that uh, all the goals were reached in my point of view. Here you can see the, the culture calendar, and you have now the possibility to add data sources and here um, we had made a button uh, which is called read me first which gives instructions how to uh, how you can load uh, new data databases to to culture in time 
And uh, what here has to be mentioned is that you need to have a little bit of technical background in writing Sparkle queries to do that, but it's very intuitive, I guess. And um, for me personally, it was cool to add my triple store, which I create for, uh, with my master thesis. So <laughs> I have a little proof of concept. We could also add um, data from uh, Zappa, for example, for the Swiss Ar Archive for the Performing Arts. And um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, maybe I can show you this. Here you see the Sparkle query to Zappa, for example. And then you have here the bottom view all in which you can check which data was actually loaded. And when you click here and go to the data source, you of course land on the page of, uh, of Zappa and can check from where the, the data is coming from. Um, we also added spotlights. Uh, it, it's now easier to add spotlights. Spotlights are uh, something like a filter. You can say um, uh, everything from 2021 and th can, then you can look at all the pictures. And what's really important is uh, you, what you can see here is the base query and here it's a chained query. So what this adds now is when you go to the Zurich productions and you go to a production, you now can see also the cast members. And that was quite an effort to reach that, but it now works and we are very happy uh, that it works. What's uh, important to mention is that this cultural calendar is more of like a playground um, for showing or performing arts institutions how they can use linked open data to promote productions. And yeah, that's quite the idea. I hope I covered all. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Manuel, for this uh, presentation. Actually, extremely well timed because one second left. Um, and uh, I think your cat liked it as well. Um, so, um, are there any questions from the audience? I was wondering, can you actually um, upload your own queries or uh, Sparkle queries, or would yes. it have to go through you? No, no, you can um, just create the user account and okay. do it yourself. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, I would ask a question. So how, how do you manage the, the chain to queries? Do you manage with Sparkle only? Yeah, sure. Um, I can answer that. <laughs> yeah, so the, the uh, chain queries was to overcome one of the problems of Sparkle, which are the famous timeouts. But um, by we're experimenting by creating smaller uh, Sparkle queries that you layer like a bit of a, a map. You can add information even from different sources into your production um, uh, details, then it becomes, uh, we're experimenting, but it, it's all in Sparkle. The idea was to have a Sparkle um, and not have to code things in code. Thank you. Thanks, I think that's very important, uh, very interesting also from an architecture point of view. Great, great work, thank you. Right. Um, Next um, on, the, on the list is uh, team number 23, um, an art project as well, but in a different direction. It's uh, the Deploy Looted Arts Detector, so anyone can use, presented by Ray Noller and Laurel Zuckerman. Please, Ray and Laurel. Hi. Um, okay, I am going to share my screen. I hope I'm a little bit faster at this time than I was um, yesterday. Um, ha. Huh. I think I can share this whole desktop, which would be useful. Can you see my screen there? Yes, yes, we do. Brilliant. So um, yeah, the project here um, was quite a small and straightforward one. Last year, um, a different group also led by Laurel created a, um, a tool that would look at the provenance data of different artworks, um, which you can get um, often downloaded as CSV from various um, museums. Um, and scan that for a bunch of red flags um, and phrases and names that suggest that it's worth looking into whether these pieces of art were um, uh, lucid by the Nazis. Um, so uh, yeah, and the task this year was just to upload this, um, deploy this onto a website so anyone can use that, which we have now done. Um, 
just to give a little bit more background information um, before I show it to you working. Um, the, the specific artworks that the tool was designed to look at are ones that were created before 1945 and entered collections after 1933. Um, and the indicators that um, the tool scans for are around uncertainty, unreliability, and, and anonymity. So we believe that this probably belonged to a lady in a private collection. That's that kind of language. Um, and also red flags, which are um, names either of known Nazi looters, um, of Jewish collectors who are known to have been plundered or murdered, or um, art dealers who are known to have been involved in at least one dodgy art deal of a looted work. Um, having given you some background, I'll just go through how this works quickly. Um, you, I have a CSV file, which I can show you here. This is provenance of um, works in the Toledo Museum of Art. I have this column here, provenance. And so um, I tell the tool, it's the provenance column, and I upload to the CSV. Um, this is new since yesterday as well. We can add a default indicator file um, with our own um, um, flags to look for. So here I have a custom one. Um, well, sorry, here I have a custom one with a lot of words um, and names that I want to search for. And then if I just um, press the button, then I get a, res a results CSV. And that looks like this. Um, here I have information about red flags from names, red flags about uncertainty. Here's a provenance that has four of those. Um, anonymity, questions. Um, I'm sorry, Ray, your things. time is up. Um, it's really an important topic and an important work. And I'm really impressed um, at what you managed to achieve in, um, in so little time. It's really, it's really great. Thanks for this work. And uh, you got a lot of compliments as well in the chat. So um, I can only forward them to you. Um, are there any you. questions? Um, I've got a question. Um, how do you know which art dealer was already involved in a, in a shady business? So is it by consulting the criminal record or scanning through newspaper articles or? I, I'll, I'll answer that question. Thank you. Okay. You have lists of restitutions that have already been made and newspaper articles about restitutions. And so what you do is you look for the names of dealers who appeared in the provenances of those artworks that were afterwards looted. And um, that's an ongoing process, but one way you can do that with is uh, text analysis software that'll just pick up all the names and then you check it against the, um, against the other lists. Okay, thank you very much also for the question. I think the, the, thank you. definitely the topic of provenance is really addressed here in several projects. So that's, um, I think that's a very interesting and uh, very up-to-date development. Um, the next project we have is called uh, Night Shift, Nachtschicht um, 21, Coding with A-Frame 3D, Virtual Reality and Art, presented by Cyprien Foll, Arber Schala, and, sorry, I lost my screen here, and Gerusha Lau. Sorry about that. But the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. I hope you can see our presentation and hear we, me well. We can see the screen, but we can't. The, 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 so the sound I'm is a bit. Um... Start just explaining you what were our sound. Uh, is it uh, better uh, if I Cipria, hear Cipria. closer to uh, the computer? Did you did you um, yeah uh, switch off your video? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe now the sound will work better. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's better. It is a lot better. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. I'll Sorry. give you an extra few seconds. So don't worry about that. Okay. So 
Yeah, this first slide just uh, the inspiration that we had during this project. So at the very beginning, we started with this background that you have of the slide. So this is a space that we had um, of a virtual reality in uh, the system solar. And then we started to imagine different scenarios where we could place instead of the planet, piece of art, or maybe other um, uh, other stuff that were uh, in our website, Narchief 21. And now I think Arusha would like to show you the important part of our work, which is our results. Yes, exactly. So um, we changed the website. Uh, the, so we worked already before the hackathon on the website with the planets. And then we wanted to create an exhibition space uh, for a friend of ours and some artists. So like that's how far we came. So um, yeah, it, it's a space where water should kind of move through the space. And um, so for example, we placed some pictures of the exhibition in it and they get bigger and so on. So now, yeah, we did it with a frame. That's a framework with JavaScript and three JavaScript. And yeah, so, so far we came already and now we want to, um, yeah, fill it up with some some stuff of the exhibition and now it's Arbor's part. So oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so what will be the next steps? Um, for example, we would add some uh, more artworks like audio pictures, texts, um, as well as a navigation path um, and some more cameras with different pers perspectives, perspe perspectives. I don't know the stress. And uh, we want to make it very intuitive, so easy to use, also for non-digital natives. Yeah, thanks. Great, thank you for this presentation and for this fascinating um, project and, um, and the visualizations that look really great and um, very attractive to me. Are there any questions? Everybody's completely stunned by now. So are you going to uh, implement this uh, with a, a, a certain collection you have in mind or do you collect like work of art from works of art from like certain places or what, what kind of, what no, kind of no, idea do you um, have in your head? The work of arts um, will be from uh, friends of us. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. And um, those will be Poetry Slam, um, Poetry Slams and audio files, um, texts, um, pictures, so all kind of, um, yeah, formats, and we will implement them into the space. And now to, there's still 25 days left until the exhibition start, starts. All right. Okay. So, um, so you have an extended hackathon. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> okay. So all the best. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah for that project. Um, thank you very much. Um, and now we're coming to um, the project Echtzeit by Open Glam, the demo scene productions, yes, um, presented by Oleg um, Labrovsky, Andre Kudra, and Ficht Hemmerle. Please, who is going to present? Oleg, I suppose. Yes. I, I give a little bit of intro and Oleg shares the first slides. OK, very good. Let's go. Let's go. So um, the scene is, this is the demo scene we are talking about, and you will learn a bit what that is. And uh, it's not rest in peace, but the scene lives. So it's an active culture, which is actually born a digital culture from the 80s. And the scene is now here to present you uh, the artworks of the demo scene. It's a digital culture producing audiovisual pieces of art and code. And uh, yeah, so we have digested the data and uh, just recently, the demo scene was recognized in Germany and Finland by UNESCO as intangible world cultural heritage. And yeah, it has produced tons of data in the past uh, 30, 40 years. And uh, we actually have tons of this data at hand for you to present this in a little application that makes this data more accessible to people who have never been in touch with the demo scene. So now it's time for Oleg to give us a look at the application. 
Sure. So um, you guys know I'm a pretty big fan of open data and I am a huge fan of this uh, underground electronic art scene. I've been involved for something like 30 years, which makes me feel really old. This website has been around for 20 years. It's the largest uh, repository of demo scene productions. The first one is from 1978. So, you know, the demo scene didn't appear yesterday. And a lot of go work goes into maintaining that information about these, uh, these releases. Um, which uh, are not formal art, but uh, you know we have this kind of Wikipedia-like interface, which we use uh, uh, to maintain the information. So we started by looking at DemoZoo. Um, the, uh, the, we actually started by looking at their open source platform and submitting some improvement proposals for their uh, data. Uh, and then we ended up creating uh, an open data package using frictionless data standards, um, which are uh, allow uh, anyone to participate in the improving the quality of data. Um, this data package, uh, released under open conditions, takes uh, data from this uh, from various platforms, aggregates it in, uh, using Python code, um, and produces an API, which looks like this. Um, so, for example, I can just refresh the page and get uh, random information. And then when I click the link, I go to uh, the appropriate production release. And based on this API, we've made this app. If Ficht is around, maybe he can tell us something about the idea here. Yeah, sorry. OK. Yeah, can you hear you? So, yes. Thank you, Oleg. Um, basically, this is uh, a simple front end with um, consuming the API from Oleg, and we packed it into an infinity loader. So you can just scroll through this amazing art. Uh, if you click on one of the boxes, you uh, get to the project. And um, yes. if you all the, all, the, all the information is on our project page. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for this fascinating presentation. I will definitely have a look at this um, because there's a lot to be discovered, I reckon. Um, are there any questions from the from the floor? I think there's probably an endless stream um, of this kind of um, artworks. So new aspects will be or new artworks will be fed into your collection or how, how does this work? Yes, there are many events, um, including um, Save the Date. Next February, we're organizing a demo party in Kham, Zug. Um, and so these, these new releases are happening all the time. We've built the data package using a new li library called Dataflows, which allows us to automate the, the uh, aggregation process and uh, yeah, refresh our, our API at all times. And actually, we, we, we are in a, in a corporation which is called Echtzeit. So we, we meet and do demo nights and do, do coding stuff together. So if you want to join the crowd, we regularly meet in Bern or somewhere else in Switzerland. So if you want to join, let's uh, reach out to us. So we are thrilled to get more people on board. Yes. And yeah, everything you see is live. Just type scene.rip into your browsers to try her out. Right, I think um, I'm, I'm positive that many people are going to do that. Um, fascinating what you did. Thanks a lot for your work and the presentation. Uh, and now, last but certainly not least, um, the last project uh, on the list is called Archived Data Diver. And um, it's a project by Barry Sutherland, who is going to present it to us right now. Yeah, Barry. thanks very much. Uh, I just need to share my presentation. OK, so you can see my presentation. Yes, we can. So yes. this is a, an idea to create a tool that would generate automated overviews of archived data sets, so zips and tar files. And uh, as you, as everyone here would know, that sometimes uh, searching for open data online can be a little bit frustrating and certainly time consuming. These platforms are, are fantastic and um, resources, but uh, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to know what you're going to get when you download uh, someone's data set. So instead of downloading the whole thing, 
you, you know, instead of uh, draining a whole lake to look at the fish, you can uh, just send a, a diver to have a quick look out and see what they find and just give you a little report back on what's inside the data set. So uh, for this, I really dove into the um, zip file module um, and extracted a lot of really useful info from zips. And from there, it, I uh, generated an overview of the different file types and created a, a collage from some uh, random sampling of images in there. And the, uh, uh, there is a report then generated um, automatically and it's opened uh, in the user's downloads folder. So this was uh, a little tricky um, because I couldn't kind of do the normal full stack architecture. I kind of started on this, but uh, realized it wasn't the best approach because you don't want to be transferring these la large files. You want to have something that will run on the machine. And also the browser can't access uh, the full file path on your on your computer, so which I learned out uh, learned during the course of the <laughs> development, and uh, yeah, it was time consuming to test out all the different varieties as if files would be something for the future. But I think uh, it went quite well. I just have to improve the report format, uh, add some more summaries, and have different um, file types. But hopefully, um, I'll get the chance to finish off these implementations and connect the the different aspects of the project together. So um, if you see here, I have some zip files on a local um, local folder on my computer. And I can run the file that um, gets some kind of info from the, from the zip file and creates this uh, HTML output that opens in your browser. And you can kind of get an overview of all the different files that are in there. And it generates this collage from the random sample of images. And you can have a little file explorer as well. So in the future, we just try and uh, improve this and tidy it up a little bit. But uh, I think it'll be best put to use and um, something server side that someone can deploy very easily and uh, integrate it into any one of these already fantastic um, online open repositories. So. Uh, if you liked what you saw or uh, are interested in uh, where I'm coming from, reach out and uh, talk to me anytime. I'd love to talk to all the group here. I was, it was my first hackathon at Glamhack. I was super impressed uh, and uh, just wanted to thank all the organizers for uh, all the fantastic work. So. Thank you, Barry, for your fascinating project. And I think this is going to be a very, very useful tool and um, might, might would be a um, perfect add-on to um, platforms like um, uh, OpenData.Swiss, for instance, um, maybe they're going to implement it. Are there any questions concerning Barry's project? Enough data wrangling for the day, I think. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. Yes. That was it, folks. I'm. Must so say, I'm. Uh, that was it for the, for, the, for the presentation. I'll hand over to you, Bert, just in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I must say I'm really impressed, um, like, like every year almost. And, um, and I think um, it's, it's interesting to see like shifts within the projects and, and the topics. Maybe Bert is going to say uh, something about this. I don't know. Um, I'd really like to thank everyone um, who's been with us for the last um, yeah, one and a half days. And uh, we've come such a long way, and it's it's always amazing uh, to see what can be achieved with um, within like one and a half day. So thanks um, to all of you, and um, also thank you, um, and also thanks to all my colleagues here in the organizing committee. And uh, I hand over to you, Beat, for the uh, final remarks. And the yeah, dear, thank you, dear Michael, dear Darian, dear participants, dear visitors. We've reached the end of these two days together in cyberspace. We thought as we have seen DTH only on our virtual backgrounds, we would like to ask our colleagues who are actually currently in the ETH building downtown Zurich to remove their back virtual background so we can actually see their offices. So it is we get a tiny bit of that ETH feeling. Uh, this hackathon has again been a a great experience, it has been intense. And we have 
again had the chance to work across borders and across continents. We've had around 75 active participants working on 17 projects. In terms of the number of projects realized during Swiss Glam Hack, this almost is a record. We are second after the first, the very first edition in 2015. But most importantly, well, the most important thing is not the numbers, the most important thing is that you have, been, that you have had fun that uh, people have been helping, aiding each other across uh, project boundaries. I think that's a very important aspect of our hackathon, this collaborative spirit that we were able to maintain, even though we haven't been able to kind of get in touch personally, uh, I mean, in, in real space. Uh, so now before we log out, uh, getting some well-deserved rest, I would like to say thank you. I would like to th say thank you to Andrea Allemann and Darian Hunziker, our project coordinators. And that's usually the moment where I ask for a big round of applause. I don't know, maybe we just turn on gallery view and you show your hands or um, whatever. Uh, you could use the applause sign also in Zoom. And I would like to also thank uh, Gabriela Padovan. She has been the project coordinator on the side of our host institution. She has been a, doing a, a really great job also taking over um, parts of the, the coordinating task when we switch from uh, Andrea to Darien. And obviously I would like to thank her colleagues, Simon Leitner, Michael Gasser, Nicole Graf from the ETH library who worked the last half year with us to organize this hackathon. Uh, besides that, we have uh, several colleagues that have been around also in earlier years. Dominic Sivi, uh, he has been the co-lead uh, of the dataset team along with Lionel Walter. Then Jonas Lentemann, who has joined him as well uh, this year. And uh, then Oleg Larovsky, our hackathon crack, who also supports us with his technical know-how and his boundless energy and creativity. He always presents a... a uh, he also presents a uh, project of his own as well. Then Thomas Weibel for reaching out to the students at the University of Applied Sciences in Graubünden. Enrico Natali and Jan Baumann from InfoClio for the after event documentation uh, that you will see in a couple of weeks, I guess, on the event uh, homepage. And a special thank you. And I, I see that the um, flowers have already arrived. A special thank you also to our two moderators, Darian Hunziker and Michael Gasser. Uh, you were great, you were perfect uh, moderators during these two days. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to working with you like in, in other years. And another type of contributor, of course, uh, of this hackathon are the providers of new data sets. We're obviously, we're already sitting on many, many data sets that have been opened up over the past years and people are able to use them, reuse data sets from all over the place. But we're always happy to see also new data sets coming up and a few projects uh, today that was, were presented were actually using new data sets. So I'm glad to thank the City of Zurich, the ETH Library, the Museum of Cultures of Basel, SIGCARD, Stiftung für Kunst, Kultur und Geschichte, the Swiss Archive of the Performing Arts, the Swiss National Library, and the Zurich Central Library, who are among this year's providers of new data sets. Then we rely on a number of partners and sponsors, usually to, to implement such a hackathon. Uh, the host institution, obviously, this year is um, the ETH library, then the event sponsors, and last but not least, also the, all the members of the Friends of Open Glam Network, who kind of pay a, a, an annual contribution uh, to our activities. And now, most importantly, I would like to extend a big thank you to all of you, to all the active hackathon contributors for participating in this experience. You have really been amazing. It has been fun, it has been intense. And uh, thanks a lot also to all the presenters and workshop participants over the past days who have been kind of, have contributed to, to an active, attractive site program. And if you haven't had the chance to see all the presentations that will be put online, uh, we have um, recorded them. 
and we will add links to the recording so they can be viewed after the event. So we, we always say keep in touch because after the hackathon is usually before the hackathon. Uh, we do have a newsletter. Uh, we have a Facebook group. We're always looking forward uh, to, to get new people on board. We're looking for heritage institutions, data scouts, hackathon organizers, uh, organizers et cetera. Uh, you can also support us by becoming a friend of Open Glam. You see the link here. And uh, there are obviously upcoming hack days. Um, we from opendata.ch, uh, we're organizing a variety of hack hackathons and hack days. So one of the upcoming ones, and I think um, uh, Darian is involved. No, tourism is Lucerne. Huh? Darian, you have to tell, you have to correct me which ones you, you're involved in. So there's the tourism hack days in Lucerne coming up uh, at the end of April, then a journalism hackathon in May and then in June there will be open the open data.ch forum which will also be an online event this year so stay tuned uh, have a look at at these hackathons organized by the open data.ch association and in the area of open glam thinking of uh, online events um, with an international touch there's the hack for open glam 2021 coming up in september that's a new format that was invented during the pandemic uh, so this will happen for the second time and obviously our glam hack will also take place again next year uh, we haven't found a host yet i have to admit that we haven't been so active uh, pre actively pursuing this so far but that's one of our next tasks uh, so if you would like to host next year's glam hack please get in touch so and now uh I would like to thank you all and uh, wish you a very nice And evening. of course, don't forget to say thank you to Bert Estermann, who actually created everything and has probably not slept in two months or so because of all the workshops. And I don't know, it was like a thousand workshops in the last month, uh, not only for the GLAM, but all the GLAM related groups. So thank you so much, Bert, for your patience and your curiosity and your constant and your energy and your energy, energy yes. exactly <laughs> Thank you. and still being humorous and joyful throughout this entire time it was wonderful yeah. working experience yeah. with you all thank you, you to, yes. to you all and i wish everybody a nice evening and yeah enjoy the sun do some screenshots now everybody do some shaking yeah, here yeah, Woo! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. take this some nice. well-deserved rest yes 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 <laughs> And we will share um, all the next information next week. So where the links are, all the challenges, what's going on, what's up next, where can you find this and that? And obviously, um, if you have any questions, critique, feedback, please come back to us. I think that was it. That yeah. was it. Thank you and see you next year. Bye bye. See you next year. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, thanks. Thank you. Have a Thank nice you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Cheers to everyone. Bye. Cheers. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye bye. Adieu. Adieu.